Hello, I'm Carl Herzog, public historian for the USS Constitution Museum. And today I'm here again in the reading room of the USS Constitution Museum's library, and this time to take a look at some ship models. We love ship models here at the USS Constitution Museum. We have a number of them in our collection. And as you can imagine, most of those are models of USS Constitution. But we also have a number of other models and we're actively engaged in a variety of, of forms of ship modeling. The USS Constitution Museum actually hosts a model shipwrights guild uh, that when the museum is open includes volunteers who are modeling on site to show off the craft to the public, but also meet regularly uh, at the museum to discuss the art and craft of ship modeling. Normally at this time of the year, we would be also hosting a, a model shipwright uh, guild show. So today though, I wanted to take a moment to tell you a little bit more about the guild and show off some of the more interesting models that we do have in our collection that I particularly like that are not necessarily of constitution, but tell us other things through the craft of modeling. So the first one I want to take a look at is a model of a variation of a Mediterranean Zebec. See if I can get that in here. There we go. Uh, this model was built by a member of the Model Shipwright Guild, Frank Clements, who uh, sadly has passed away. Uh, Frank built this in 2003 to represent uh, the type of ship that the Barbary Corsairs that Constitution uh, was combating in the Mediterranean would have sailed. Now, a Mediterranean Zebec was a style of vessel that was common in the Mediterranean for a very, very long time uh, and for a variety of uses. The larger three-masted Zebec, uh, Zebec that Constitution uh, and the rest of the American Navy were facing frequently had a third mizzen mast uh, at aft and the forward one moved a little bit forward. This made them a little bit longer and frequently carried more guns than this particular model does. The interesting thing about it though is how totally different it is even as a small fighting warship from the kinds of ships that uh, the Americans or the British Royal Navy would have been sailing at the time. The Latin rig is a very old uh, sailing design, sailing rig design, but it remains incredibly uh, popular uh, even today in large parts of the world because it's relatively efficient and pretty easy to construct. The large spars uh, leaning fore and aft allow it to sail upwind pretty well, which is a real advantage in the fluky winds of the Mediterranean. This is also a common vessel in the Arabian Sea, parts of the Indian Ocean as well. Uh, it did also have oars, which allowed them to continue maneuvering even when there wasn't uh, any wind at all. The shallow draft is another uh, uh, example of it or a characteristic of it. Uh, by virtue of this shallow depth, they were able to get in and out of places that deeper draft, uh, heavier weight vessels couldn't necessarily get into. Uh, the coloring and flags on it uh, represent um, a, a perspective of the time period. The colors of the sails were frequently colored in uh, different ways to represent uh, the nationalities at hand. Um, and you frequently see, particularly on these sails and other sails, uh, tan bark coloring. It's tannins that were infused into the cloth to uh, protect it from the UV damage of the sun. It also has, instead of a bowsprit, uh, sort of a ramming foreend that could allow it to function uh, kind of like an older version galley uh, ramming into it. This is sort of a development from the older galleys that uh, also appeared um, in the Mediterranean. And this kind of vessel was relatively common uh, throughout the 18th and into the early 19th century. But even today, uh, descendants of this and variations of it, smaller felucas, uh, palacras, some other types of vessels are still pretty common in that part of the world. Um, not so much as warships at this point under sail, 
but still as uh, people transportation and cargo transportation. It's really cool, colorful, and can to give you a sense of everything that would have to go into model making and model building if you've never done it before. The detail is pretty exquisite. Uh, and Frank, the builder, was always fond of saying how much he enjoyed doing all of the detailed rigging work on models like this. The second one that I wanted to take a look at today is totally different. And this is a model of an anchor hoy. And I'm sorry I can't show this up in more detail with a zoom lens, but hopefully you'll be able to see this. Um, this vessel is a uniquely specialized design that was uh, created by William Dowdy, uh, who was a constructor at one of the Navy yards. And it was part of a series of efforts to design specialized vessels that were going to be needed by the Navy yards following the War of 1812. The Anchor Hoy was designed and built around 1818 and did see service in the Boston Navy Yard. Uh, this particular model of one was built by Albert Bevins uh, in 1979, and in 1997, uh, he donated it to the museum. What I love about this model is that it gives us a window into the problem solving that was necessary as navies were developing uh, and naval shipyards were developing. The anchor hoy was designed to do just that, to handle anchors and other heavy gear around the shipyard harbor. It's symmetrical in shape and it can actually be reversed completely without having to turn around. It could sail in either direction. The large davit on one end was designed to lift up heavy anchors that may have dropped down into the harbor or to set other mooring anchors to other kinds of work around the harbor. By virtue of being able to swap the davit and the rudder on the other end to opposite sides, it didn't even have to turn completely around with a heavy load. It could just sail off in the other direction. As part of that symmetrical design, it also has two capstans, one at either end, allowing it to again work either end of the vessel. Uh, and the davit itself fit into a well that was built into the deck and again had a duplicate well um, on the stern that the entire thing could swip, uh, switch across to. It had a single gaff rigged sail, uh, the gaff rig um, gaff rigged being sort of a development and advancement over uh, more common Latin sails that had been used by America's Europeans earlier on. Um, it was easier to set, didn't require as much effort to tack. And in this case, um, with a forward uh, jib, could provide the balance and power that was needed to haul an anchor that, in this case, in this particular scale, would have been about 2,500 pounds. I think it's another great example of what we get out of uh, ship model building and model making. The opportunity to kind of find something so unique and then dive into it and learn the details of it by building a replica of it like this uh, is just endless fun. From the model makers that uh, I meet and talk to at our guild all the time, one of the thrills in this hobby for them is doing the research, discovering this new subject matter, new vessels that they want to create models of, but then during the process of constructing them, one of the other challenges is always figuring out how to duplicate those parts of the vessel in such tiny scale. In this particular case, and although I don't know that you might be able to see it in detail here, this one includes the anchor road coiled up on the deck and connected to the buoy that would have been attached to that anchor uh, in the harbor so that it could be found and hauled up later on. This is a great model. Really fun. Thirdly, we have a model that is far less unique um, on the surface, but unique in its own right. This is a plastic kit built model of USS Constitution in 1196 scale. And the model kit was made by the Ravel Model Company. 
Uh, and if you've had any experience um, with scale modeling or scale models of any kind um, as a child or an adult, you've probably heard of this company. They, through the 1900s, uh, made millions of model kits of everything from ships to automobiles to airplanes to military vessels and vehicles spacecraft uh and even um science fiction uh kind of spacecraft and other subject matter this is they make uh, several different scale kits of uss constitution and certainly as a kid i built a lot of Ravel models including probably this one certainly i know i worked on the larger version of their constitution one now Given that probably hundreds of thousands, if not honestly millions of copies of this kit have been sold over the last 50 years uh, or more years, why would we have one accessioned in our collection? This particular version of this Ravel model is one that was actually assembled by the professional team at the Ravel company and then presented by Ravel to Commander Tyrone Martin, who was the captain of USS Constitution from 1974 to 1978, and as such uh, was in command of Constitution during a lot of the 1976 bicentennial celebrations that went on. Uh, Commander Martin gave the model uh, to USS Constitution Museum in 1989. I love the idea uh, that this model represents in terms of the accessibility of model making as a hobby. I certainly built tons of Ravel plastic models and was part of their master modeler club as a kid. Uh, but it was also an introduction for thousands of modelers into sort of the nature of parts and pieces and assembling them and served as a gateway to more detailed and sophisticated modeling in wood or other medium, uh, including even paper, uh, that members of our guild participate in. So to that end, I think it's significant um, in, in just a lot of really great ways, and we're very proud to have it here at the USS Constitution Museum. Um, these are three unique uh, but relatively small models that I could bring out to show you today. This one, by the way, uh, is available, sold with sales, uh, available to the kit, but a lot of people would build it without the sales because it's an opportunity to show off the various detailed rigging. Uh, and larger versions of these models could um, present more detailed uh, views into the inside of the ship as well, too. The values of ship model making uh, as a hobby are certainly uh, pretty self-explanatory. If you like sort of engineering, designing, problem solving, uh, it's fun to be able to figure out how to put these pieces together. And then the crafting, if you're doing that in wood, requires uh, some relatively small amount of woodworking, small woodworking tools, and allows you the opportunity to, to build in that scale. Or if you're doing it in plastic, even if it comes as a kit, the opportunities to um, sort of amend that kit and adjust it and, and shape it to your own liking are there too. But the other values that model making have had for uh, naval architects, um, ship designers, navies and shipwrights over the centuries is that it's an opportunity to see the form of the ship in small scale as it's being designed and built. And to that end, the British Admiralty in particular uh, and other navies as well, would build very, very detailed scale models of the ships that they were intending to construct in real life. In fact, for a number of those Admiralty models belonging to the British, they were completely sealed up with the decks covered over. There was no way to open it up and look inside. And so they were largely hidden from view from the 1700s until around the 1990s when the creation of fiber optic cameras allowed researchers to sneak inside, slip a camera uh, on the end of a threaded sort of fiber optic line into the insides of these models and discover that despite the fact 
that the model in its completed state was completely sealed up, that the interior details had been excruciatingly constructed uh, down to the specifics of panels even on the doors of cabins. Um, that attention to detail, even though it would go completely covered up, was part of the craft and intent of building those models. Uh, half hulls carved out depictions of just the hull itself is another form of modeling that allowed designers and architects to get a sense and understanding of how the water would flow past the hull, how effective and efficient it might be in the water, and then also to serve as a template for beginning to assemble the ship. Most wooden ships were made from frames and then planking over the frames in one fashion or another. And a lot of ship model making is done exactly that way. Tiny individual planks are cut and then either glued or fastened with uh, uh, metal fasteners or wooden fasteners even depending on the scale over the carved wooden frames. This attention to detail too uh, is part of the challenge in shaping as a woodworking project of it, but it also provides an insight into the nature and requirements that would have been gone into building a ship like that in, in real life as well. Um, if you're interested in learning more about ship model making uh, and model ship building, you can find a lot of information on our modelers resources page of the USS Constitution Museum website. It includes a, a lot of detailed plans and information about building a variety of kinds of models of USS Constitution. And also on that site is a link to the USS Constitution Shipwright, uh, Model Shipwrights Guild's website. And on their website, you can find tutorials and introductory videos that'll tell you more about pursuing ship modeling as a hobby yourself and the kinds of tools that you need to start out with and how to learn more about participating uh, in our Shipwright Guild uh, as a member and accessing their incredible wealth of detailed knowledge and information about how to build, uh, how to build one of the models. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.